Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Work is continuing on my show trees for this coming weekend's Toronto Bonsai Show and Sale. I was at Tropical Expressions in Hamilton this morning and I'll show you what I bought. So here is my package. So the first thing I can pull out is this. A little wooden stand. Very nice one, $10. I'll put that there. And I have a larger stand, a square stand, fairly tall and fairly ornate. So does that stand. I have a, a round stand like that. Fancy round one and I have in here there's a stand and a plant. So there's my plant. Let me get that out first. It's an aloe, of course. So it's one of those small leaved aloes. Um, I thought I'd better get another one. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Put that on the stand. And then the other stand is this one. So it's a little it's a little bigger than the other one. You can see it's a little larger of a square and it's a different style. So yeah. So I was really happy to get all these. I think it'll, uh, if I don't use it in this show, I'll use it in a future show. I'll get the price sticker off the stands. That one's okay. And we'll try them out with some trees. I've set up my Arizona Cypress on the stand in front of the background there. Yeah, it looks, it looks miniature, that's for sure. Here's a look at my Portulacaria Afra on the larger stand. I think that looks pretty good too. Again, looks very miniature. Definitely in scale. Here's my winter jasmine on the larger stand. Ah, it looks nice. Here is my jade on the round stand. Interesting. I don't know if that really suits it. It doesn't have any feet, this pot. It has holes in the bottom, but no cutouts for feet. Here's a look at my grasses on top of the round stand. I think this is very suitable. It looks really good on it. Yeah, I'm pleased with that look. I'll be showing my bird's nest spruce on that red stand that Josh has lent me. And I was saying I didn't have a matching stand for the accent plant, but I think this one would match it really nicely. The color is good. I've got out the stand for the bird's nest spruce and I was just checking the color of the new little stand compared to it and it is so, so close. It's, well, it's the same color. Just this one is a little more matte and the other one's shiny. So I think that will be perfect. Let's try it out. Let's get the bird's nest spruce out and the accent plant and try it out. Here's a look at the bird's nest spruce on the stand with the accent plant and definitely the color ties the two together. This one is a little low, but uh, that's the best I have, so it'll have to do. Um, one thing I have to do is to plant the accent plant. I never got around to doing that. I've been trying to keep them watered, but it needs to go in a pot. It's just, it was just kind of sitting loose in a tray. So that is next. I've got to plant this accent plant in this pot. I'll start by giving it a little bit of water. It's kind of drying out today. Okay, let's get this planted in the pot. So I'll need to put a drainage screen in here first. Take the price tag out of the pot. I have got my nylon mesh window screen fitted to the bottom of the pot. Fits really nicely. So I'll get some soil in there and then plant it. So I'm going to put some bonsai soil on the bottom 
plant the planting and then put sand on top. That should keep it hydrated. All right, in goes a layer of bonsai soil. Pretty big particles. That should be good. Kind of a base layer there. Then I'll put the planting on top and I'll mound it up. It's already kind of a, a mounded clump style. There's one in here that's already dead, so I'm going to prune that one out. There's a root here. That's dried up, I'll prune that out. Do that, and I think the rest is okay. Uh, I do have some debris, some dead leaves in here. Clean that out. This is supposed to look like spring, not fall. Well, this one's dead too. I'll take that out. Some more debris there. I'll have to dress it up with some, you know, really nice green moss, so it does look like spring. There's another root that can come off here. So this is one of Sophie's miniature pots. Come on. Okay. I'll get out the sand now. I'll get this planted. I'll try and kind of arrange the trees a little bit. Oh, there's another one that's dead there. I'll get rid of that one too. That's fine. It makes it a little more asymmetrical. All right. I'll use the regular playground sand. Not the desert color. Ideally, this should have been planted like weeks ago, but I don't know. I just always run out of time. I knew this last week before the show, I'd be running around doing things. So just a little bit more sand here, and I think It'll be ready for watering. Okay, I'll give that a water. Here I go. Let that soak in. Water again. Soak in. Water again. All right, that's looking good. I'll go around to the front sidewalk and get some sidewalk moss and I can brighten this whole planting up kind of making a mound a moss mound I think that'll look really really good I'll show you where I get the really good moss out here on the front sidewalk we head out here and then down here if you look here in between the curb and the sidewalk this is a nice fine moss and as soon as you water it it greens up it's a little bit dry looking right now and this moss goes all the way down the sidewalk almost to the end so I have a good supply of moss at all times I'll scrape off some of the moss like that put it in my tray and sometimes you get weeds in here but you just pick them out growing in that one okay that's going to be plenty that amount here is a look at the moss so this is kind of the before where it looks dry and kind of not very green so I think by the time the show comes it should be a nice bright green color and looking very very healthy so I'll plant the moss next all right my first step is to soak this moss so I've got a tray of water here underneath my planting. So I'll just get this moss soaking here. You see there's some grass growing out of this one. Yeah, so once that's soaked, it gets uh, very soft 
and then you can apply it to your planting. Since I brought my sarissa up from the basement once again, I just noticed it has its first flower over here. Right here. Kind of exciting. Yeah, so it's greening up again nicely. My Chinese village penjing is also greening up. The ficus are growing new leaves. So it's not ready for the show, but it's definitely coming back. I think for the fall show, this is going to look really good. I'll make sure it does though. Get the houses painted up. Everything will be tidied up and looking really good for the fall show. All right, I'm going to begin planting the moss now. It's been soaking here for a while. So I'll start kind of around the edge of the pot here, like that. Just break off little bits and kind of fit them, fit them in place like a jigsaw puzzle. You have to make sure your moss is well pressed down. That's looking much, 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 much nicer. Big piece at the back here. Kind of reaching up in the clump there. And then in the clump here, I'm going to plant some too on top. It'll look quite nice. At least I hope anyway. It'll look more like plants growing out of a moss ball. So I'm thinking that these plants might be privet. I can't remember where they came from. They may have just seeded themselves here in a pot or something. Now, I better press it all down. So I'll use all my fingers here and kind of push it into that kind of rounded moss ball look. which will look kind of like a hill. Okay, now there's a few yellow leaves here I want to prune out. I don't want anything that looks unhealthy or looks like it's fall or anything like that. I want it to look like spring where everything's coming out in vibrant colors. So a lot of these leaves have to come off because they're just not not looking good. They're a little yellowy, some had spots on them. Those ones are okay. Yeah, I think that's about the best I can get it. Now this one down here, it's kind of going a funny direction. I think I'm going to prune off this tip like that. So at least it'll grow up right then. Okay, well I, I guess that's that's got the planting. Maybe just a, a little bit of green in here. Yeah. yeah, that's got it. Let's have a look now at the bird's nest spruce with its accent plant and see how it looks. All right, here it is. And my initial thought is it looks better. It's uh, the green moss of the accent plant really ties in with the bird's nest spruce. It, uh, yeah, I, I like it as an accent plant. So I've got the direction of the accent plant kind of flowing towards the bird's nest spruce. Yeah, I, I think that looks quite nice. I think I'm very happy with this as a display. Until showtime, I'm going to keep the accent plant in this tray and I'll put a little bit of water in the bottom. like that so that'll keep it nicely hydrated so hopefully it'll uh, take off and grow before the weekend and look really good I've had a lot of people ask me how am I going to transport all these little tiny trees to the show and I'll show you how I'm going to do it so I'll take them all off the bench and the bench will come separately from the base down here and then up here I have a tray an under tray it's got feet on it, there's no drainage holes. There is a crack in it though, but... Uh, so I'm going to fill it with sand, wet the sand down, and then I just press all the little plants into the sand. 
and they should stay there just fine for the car ride to the show. I'll start adding the sand to the tray. Spread it out evenly. Okay, here's some more. So not only will this be used to transport them to the show, but this is where the trees will grow in the summer. They'll stay in the cool sand here. The uh, pots and roots will stay hydrated. Generally, the roots grow out of the drainage holes and into the sand here, which keeps the trees super healthy over the summer, especially in those really hot days. It keeps the roots cooler, keeps the plants happier, hydrated. Okay, so I think that's a fairly good level of sand. I can put a little more here. That's it. Okay, I'll start placing all my trees in the sand now. So here is number one. I'll put it right in the middle. So you need to bury them fairly deeply, and that keeps them cool. My thuja starting to look like a little forest here. The last kumquat, maybe I'll rearrange these a bit. I'll put this one out front here. And this one can go back here. Okay, so that's, you know, I can transport that to the show. I will give it a water. I don't want to give it too much water. I don't want to like have water sitting in the bottom. So I'm just going to give it a light sprinkle. Enough to wet the sand down. And I think that'll do. This is where the trees will stay on those hot summer days. Hopefully the roots will escape out of the drainage holes and into the sand and it'll really, really keep them healthy. So that's the plan, is the uh, wet sand trick in the tray. Next up is my mixed northern bog forest. I left a whole bunch of weeds in the moss because they were kind of miniature looking and to scale. But now they've grown large and look like weeds, so I've got to pull them all out. Here is a look at those weeds, so you can see they're totally out of scale now. There might be a few small ones that are still okay, but I would say I've got to pull at least 80 to 90% of them out of the planting. So, here I go. Let's see if I can get them out. Yeah, I came out with the roots. They, these kind pull out fairly easily. See, they're coming out with the roots and all. Once I get these weeds out, I will have to prune the moss also. The pathways are looking good. They filled in with moss, so they don't look so obvious anymore. I think they're just at the right level. I think, you know, by showtime they'll look perfect. It's kind of filling in. Oh, I'm having good luck with these weeds. I'm getting, you know, 99% of them out with the roots. So with the moss, I'm going to leave it long at the front and then prune it shorter and shorter towards the rear of the planting giving a forced perspective look to the moss and I'm hoping it kind of helps miniaturize the whole planting a bit more. So today is the day where I look at this very carefully with my close-up glasses and I look for things that are out of scale or don't look right in the forest. So I have to be very critical because today is Tuesday and you know the show is coming up fast. I don't want to be rushing around Friday night trying to get everything finished. I'm going to have to remove all the weeds towards the back of the planting because of the forced perspective. I want the larger weeds up front and they've got a diminish away to nothing at the back so I'll just have to pull all those those ones out from the back because they just they look too big back there now several people have suggested I put some deadfall in the forest to make it more realistic and 
I've tried putting broken branches on the forest floor in some of my other forests and it makes it look more realistic but it also clutters up the forest floor it right now you know the forest kind of looks like a fantasy forest um, if you start getting all kinds of branches and clutter in here it, it'll make it looks more realistic but it loses some of its charm and that's what I found anyway that sometimes realism isn't what you're striving for so I, I can try some you know maybe a tree tipped over or something uh, I can definitely try that today and see how it looks and if I find the right tree branch maybe it'll look really good but I know from the past that generally it just starts looking well realistic and kind of cluttered because most forests if you walk through them they're they're a mess you can hardly even walk through them it's only like park areas and that that are clear I know I've walked through a cedar forest where I couldn't even walk through it it was so dense that I had to look for little deer trails and then bend down and kind of go underneath the tree limbs it was very hard to get through it so I saw Madeline at Tropical Expressions today she showed me all the latest trees and oh there's some good ones at Tropical Expressions I'll be going back there uh, fairly soon and I'll show you all the trees they have in stock some very kind of exotic species so this larch down here you can see how the trunk is kind of undercut and I'm not sure if it's alive even uh, see this banding where it ends here I think that's where the living tissue ends and this is all there's no bark on it down below so I think that tree is doomed and there might be a live strip at the back maybe because it is growing but not very well so I'll keep my eyes on it and if I have to pull it out and replace it with another tree I will a lot of these trees were chewed on by rabbits before I planted them in here so that could have been one maybe a mouse got at it or something some of the trees will also need a bit of cleanup I've noticed there's some new growth on some of them that needs pinching on the spruce even the larch, this one's really pushing out again. There's all kinds of new growth on it. Which is exciting. I'm glad this is you know, the second flush of growth of the season. And it's very early in the season. So that's one advantage of a greenhouse is that you can extend the growing season. I've got the second flush of growth going already and most larches will just be putting out their first flush of growth so kind of get your trees ahead a bit so you can develop them more over the summer you get more flushes of growth which leads to more and more branching more and more pruning more and more branch selection so it's good and they still get a good long period of winter dormancy too Wow, the weeds are incredible in here. I'm just picking them out like crazy. Little tiny weeds all in the moss here. So I think I'll be adding a lot of that sidewalk moss in here to get some variation. So I'll have some short green moss. I'll have this long kind of moss that looks like uh, ferns. I've got another kind of moss on the end here so it should provide enough variety that it looks quite natural I don't want it a patchwork I want it to look fairly realistic maybe sections have their own kind of moss like the shade versus the sunlight the edge of the forest versus the deep center of the forest they all have different kinds of mosses here is a look at all the weeds I pulled out. There is a lot. So here's the forest. And 
here's an example of the different moss. So I've got this moss here and then the long moss here. So I'll prune this back a little shorter and that'll make a contrast. This looks like, like a boggy area where there's you know, taller plants growing up. A less boggy area has shorter moss. So yeah, I'll be pruning for variety. Here's another kind of moss over here. It's sort of like more upright moss. And then over here, you got that upright moss and then you've got the fuzzy stuff at the back here, the short moss. Oh, and I just saw a liverwort I missed in there. Got it. Yeah, so I can uh, get that sidewalk moss and I can do a lot of touch-ups, little clumps of it, again, to provide variety. And I think it's going to look really nice. I'll show you an example of adding the new moss, that sidewalk moss. So my trail kind of goes here and I was going to put some patches of this moss in here. So I'll just put little little clumps here. Just provide a little bit of a different look. So here's an idea of, you know, the little subtle variety of mosses in the planting. And it just, yeah, it makes it look a little more miniature because it uh, gives a variety of texture in the terrain. Long moss, short moss, green moss, yellowy moss. Yeah, it makes a difference. I've got my bog forest all weeded, looking much, much better. I'm going to stop tonight, and then tomorrow I'll continue the work on here, on the bog forest, doing all the fine detailing of the pathways, the moss, pruning the moss, adding uh, more moss, a different variety, trying to get the landscape to look more and more realistic. So that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.